Well, it's great to see everybody here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to talk um, a bit about um, the role of MIT in helping to make um, America safe for elections or something like that. Um, and um, in preparing my remarks, I, um, um, I was reminded that um, elections have a long history at MIT, um, the, the study of elections. Um, Walter Dean Burnham has been mentioned a couple of times. Um, and as I think most people here know, um, there is a thing called ICPSR, the Inter-University Consortium of Political and Social Research that's been around for over half a century now as the main depository for data in political science and other social sciences and as a training institute, et cetera. Um, they have hundreds, if not actually thousands of data sets that we rely on um, um, to do our work oftentimes. ICPSR study number one, number one, is Walter Dean Burnham's archive of election, historic election returns. And so I like to think that the, historic, the study of elections in, in political science owes um, a great deal of debt to, to Dean, who did a lot of that work before he came here, but certainly continued it after as well. I remember I'm running into him oftentimes in um, the Sloan cafeteria reading the 1874 um, edition of the Tribune Almanac and finding new election returns. So, so there's a great history here of working on, on elections. The, um, the specific case I want to talk about is more recent than um, Dean's work, uh, most of Dean's work, and it has to do with MIT's response to the, to the 2000 election um, um, fiasco, and particularly the debacle in Florida. And um, this is a story both about the political science department, but it's actually a, a broader story than that in the sense that um, the political science department is distinct because here because it's at MIT, and MIT is a particular institution as well. And the department really partakes of, of, of the larger institute. And um, MIT's involvement with reforming elections over the last decade and a half um, in part is, um, is motivated by a desire to apply our knowledge to improving elections in this country in a very MIT way. So um, my talk starts with a creation story. And in the beginning, there was the 2000 election in Florida. And um, it, it occupied our attention for two to three months. Um, and you know, the, we remember the hanging chad and other um, indicia of, of failure of election administration in Florida. In the days after um, the recount in Florida began, David Baltimore, who at the time was the president of, of of Caltech was in a shower, and in a classic shower moment, came to the conclusion that the problem in Florida was a breakdown of technology. And the two great technological universities in the world owed it to the country to try to figure out how to make this never happen again. David got on the phone to Chuck Vest, um, who is a real champion of using universities to solve national problems, and the two together formed what has um, come to be called the Caltech MIT Voting Technology Project, what I like to call the MIT Caltech Voting Technology Project. Um, and this is a really cool um, group that continues to this day, although we are smaller and we are not as active as we were in two th between 2000 and 2005. Um, let me tell you why it's, it's particularly MIT, and then let me tell you what we did at the time and what we've done since then. The reason why it's very MIT, and I guess I have to say um, begrudgingly also very Caltech, is that this was an interdisciplinary project from the beginning and continues so to this day. So I believe Tom, um, Tom Wolf last night mentioned that one of the great things about MIT was the permeability of disciplinary boundaries, and that's the story here. The Voting Technology Project brought together not only political scientists like myself, Steve, Stephen Saliba here, who was the director at the time, at the time on, on the faculty, but also economists um, from Caltech such as um, um, Tom Palfrey, Steve Graves from Course 15 here, Alex Slocum from Course 2, um, and included a real rocket scientist, um, the, 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 the chief of, of, of science at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Eric Antonson. It included um, Jonathan Katz, a political scientist at Caltech who had been an, an MIT undergraduate here. 
So it included social scientists, included management um, experts, included designers such as Ted Selker, who at the time was in the, in the media lab. Um, it included um, a wide variety of folks who took a look at the um, election system. And so this is what happened. We were brought together and told that our, our, our job was to build the perfect voting machine. That was our job. And we discovered really um, quickly that this was a dumb idea. <laughs> dumb idea. Why was it a dumb idea? It was a dumb idea, and this is the neat thing, presidents at MIT are happy to be told their idea was dumb if you have good reasons for it. And the reason was that because we were approaching this problem like a bunch of engineers, as you would expect at MIT, we quickly came to the conclusion that the problem was a systems problem. Yes, the most um, visible failure in 2000 was due to the failure of voting machines. But if you looked at elections in America, in almost every state, there were problems all along the line, ranging from the registration of voters to the casting of votes, to actually getting the ballots, and then to the counting of votes. And we documented, using the techniques of the social sciences, of economics, um, that in the 2000 election, there were up to six million people who woke up on election day intending to vote, did exactly what was asked of them, and their vote was not counted by the end of the day. Out of roughly 100 million people who showed up, about 6% of them ended up not having their vote count. Half of those, roughly, were because the voting machines they used broke down. Okay, that was the hanging chad problem, or the butterfly ballot problem. Another three million people, actually an even larger number of people, went to the polling place, they were registered, but their name couldn't be found on the list. They were sent away, unable to vote. Another million people went to the polling place, saw a long line, got out of line, and went home. And so, as you can see, a couple of million of votes were lost because of machine problems, but an even larger number were lost because the system had broken down in so many, in so many states. And so, thing number one, I would just say, is that, you know, MIT was probably the rare university that could point this out precisely because of the interest in systems and precisely because that social scientists at MIT are not afraid of playing with engineers and scientists and in fact not afraid of playing with a real rocket scientist from Caltech. Okay, so that's, that's that was the good, the good, so the good story was that we documented um, the problems. The other good story was that the Voting Technology Project um, got, was recognized as being the honest broker in the highly politically charged environment of trying to figure out what to do. And over the next couple of years, VTP scientists, um, myself included, um, talked to politicians, talked to policymakers, talked around the country, and eventually at the national level, the Help America Vote Act was passed in 2002, which outlawed certain sorts of voting machines, required the upgrading of um, voter registration systems, provided money for research on polling place practices, provided $2 billion to, build, to, to buy new voting machines, and provided for the creation of an election assistance commission that would actually do the type and support the type of research that we had been doing. Um, and I, I'm proud to say that one of the things that we've been able to show is that because of the changes to law and the changes to technology, that roughly half of those votes that were lost in 2000 have been recovered in subsequent elections. That is to say, there are still lost votes on election day, but that number has been cut in half. And so through our research and then providing justifications for the creation of an infrastructure to improve elections in the United States, any given federal election, there are between two and three million people whose votes will count, whose votes would not have counted otherwise. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the fact that MIT is the sort of place that fosters rigor and relevance so that through the application of the social sciences, um, um, and also engineering, um, we can make elections better. So, and there have been other, 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 other sources of good news in this collaboration over the last several years between the scientists and the, and the engineers. Just very quickly, in addition to cutting votes in half, I've been involved with a few charitable trusts 
um, to develop something called the Elections Performance Index. I would encourage you to Google it. It's um, an effort to do something like the Freedom Foundation rating of countries. We rate states, how well they run elections. Um, and I was pleased just the other day to see that the Secretary of State in Louisiana, which is not known for running great elections, by the way, a Republican who was faced with trying to argue that it should be easier for people to register by registering online, justified in part doing this because he said, you know, our rating on the elections performance index is really, really low. If we do this, we'll rise up a few points. Okay, so um, rigor and relevance in improving elections. Um, LA County, um, we, we, um, the Voting Technology Project has worked with LA County. LA County, the, um, uh, officials there are happy to tell you if it were a state, would be the seventh largest state in America. Um, LA County votes on machines that are basically punch cards, but instead of punching out punch cards, they use Sharpies to make marks on ballots. They run, these, um, um, they run these ballots through systems, tabulation systems that are, that are coded in COBOL and Fortran, running on top of DOS and Windows 3 systems. LA County, I'm, this is not being hyperbolic, faces a catastrophic shutdown of its election system. The VTP was ever able through research funded by foundations, through convening um, user groups, citizen groups, um, 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 designers and engineers to get a process going in LA County that is now a national model for the development of open source election systems so that LA County, I'm, I'm confident, will, will dodge that bullet. So um, there's a lot of other things that, that, that I can say, and I've, I've, made, I've made this point several times, but I'll just, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll make it one last time, um, but in a different way. Um, I think everyone in this auditorium knows that we face great challenges with elections in America these days, that election administration has been caught up in this political polarization that infects all of our political life. And in fact, because voting is so fundamental to these battles, there's partic particular uh, harshness to debates about election rules. Um, the Voting Technology Project is one of the few organizations to this day that, are considered, that is considered to be a set of honest brokers that can help to find a way through this morass. So just as one final example, um, after the 2012 election, President Obama noted that we needed to do something to shorten lines. He, um, he appointed a presidential commission on election administration, which had no staff, basically. The PCEA co-chairs, Republican and the Democratic um, lawyers, um, contacted me, Stephen Salabahir, um, VTP Emeritus, <laughs> um, and at their behest, we brought together a bipartisan group of social scientists, engineers, technologists, designers, to help them do their work. And their work has been broadly praised as being a model of bipartisan agreement within a context that's usually really, really vicious. And so I think MIT can be proud for what it's doing for um, American democracy as it struggles through what sometimes are some dark days. Thank you.